Hopefully we get to answer some more of your questions, but we are excited to dive right in. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of things I wanted to address. I've kind of, we haven't been online as much today because we've had some Zoom meetings and stuff. Um, but um, the one thing I wanted to talk about is somebody said that like, I read somewhere that somebody said that we like knew all the things that were in the contracts. And I think there's just some things that I should explain. First of all, we were given those contracts and we had, I think, 48 hours to sign them. We were given all these contracts. Um, there was a lawyer who was paid for by the CWAS that was supposed to negotiate this. And we could not go on the TV show until you signed the recording merchandising contract in anticipation if you made the group, you would already be under these contracts. So like, imagine we're, we're not blindsided, but like we kind of aren't, don't know what we're getting into, but then we all have to already sign the contracts for And we it. had to be rushed. Um, Thank you, Olivia, for the badge. <laughs> and we had to be rushed because if we wanted to go, if, you know, Leah wanted to do the TV show, then we had to sign these. Um, and some people opted not to. Um, but one thing I wanted to address is that in our contracts, it does say, and I am going to post, I, when I find this section, I am going to post it. Our contracts never required us to relocate to California. Nowhere that we signed said that we had, if we made the group, we had to relocate. Exactly. The, the contracts also said that while we were working, and let me make sure that I say this correctly, that while we are, were working, that travel and accommodations would be provided, which means all the travel, the housing, also um, our transportation. That is in the contracts. It says while we are working. It doesn't say... Um, you're going to go to California and spend a year there without going home. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say you're required to, to, to relocate. It doesn't say that we're required to, to pay for our own housing. Um, it says that while we're working... And it and that means I took that to mean anything that those things would be provided. So why we began when we first began, um, Jess told us we were when we were first going out to LA to do the first Candy Hearts thing. It was the it was in September, right after we finished filming in August. Um, and I had put Leah in school. Leah was in her performing arts. Ha, ha, performing arts high school, we were under the impression that we would just be traveling back and forth. We would go for a few weeks, work, and she would come home. And we would go to California and then keep asking, asking there would never be a return date. So we would go there without knowing when we were going to come home. What? How long do you think was like the longest that we stayed out there for? Oh gosh, six, seven months. I Seven, think, eight months. And yeah. so when we going to Carrie and Bella and Leah and I were going into a hotel for the first trip and then Jess comes back and says well if I do that it's recoupable for the group so then Tracy and Tim kindly because they have a really big house a nice house kindly offered for us to come stay with them temporarily just because we thought it was going to be a back and forth thing and yeah. that way it was staying for a week it's fine to Two weeks. bung up at Kinley's house, stay for a week, go home, you know? Yeah. And we were doing that because the group was beginning, and we're like, you know, let's be team players. Let's don't cost a group a lot of money right from the beginning. You know, everybody was chipping in at that time. Um, Cece and Brooklyn didn't live there. I believe they were staying with Kristen in Dallas. So everybody was kind of... Like chipping in in our way, we're like, you know, let's help the group not have to put this extra money into hotels and all that. And that's where the whole sleeping on the air mattress in Kinley's dance room came from. I ordered an air mattress and some sheets and had on Amazon to Tracy's house. And then downstairs, she had a... a an extra living room with a fold out couch and that's where Bella um, and her mom stayed and they used a downstairs bathroom and they kindly gave Leah and I run of, of Kinley and her brother's bathroom and then their whole family, the four of them was sharing one bathroom. Yeah, 
Yeah. It used to be very, very temporary. It wasn't uh, supposed to be a permanent solution. We were never under the impression even that... Housing was supposed to be provided. Yeah, and we were never under the impression that um it was going to be out there only our probably our last six months in the group just kept talking about us moving out and yeah and I and kept, we were actually like we considered it but considered. the thing is my husband's job doesn't really exist in california and he was the only one supporting our family and so we were very like on the edge about it at the same thank time thank goodness we didn't but but i do i do i will be looking for those that section in the contract that talks about housing and travel because I think that's really important for everybody to know housing that was in the contract. Housing as in the content house? No. no. As like in a place housing, for us to live. Whenever when we, work. we come out to California, since we are not already located there, whenever we come out, we have a place to stay. Yeah. <clears throat> and so then when we had lived at Tracy's for well over a year, not hardly getting to come home at all. Um, Jess finally got an Airbnb for, and then Bella and Carrie and Leah and I shared the Airbnb um, for a while. And then Leah and I ended up, after they took half of Leah's advance, um, which is not they w weren't allowed they to contractually do that. they were not supposed to do that because that was her advance for the record, and our contract says that she's responsible for housing. It doesn't say she can take half of our advance or half of Leah's money. It was more than half, right? No, it was half because fifteen hundred went in your Coogan account. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So she took half of of her money, saying she had to pay for the Airbnb. But that's not what the contract states. So Leah and I moved back in with Tracy um, and Kinley after that, and stayed with them until we got let go of the group that because I didn't want them to take any more of Leah's money out of any money that she was going to get, which she didn't get anymore, but. You know, I didn't want them to take any more of that money for housing. And Tracy and Kinley kindly offered for us to come back and, and stay with them again. So that's kind of like the housing situation. Um, and I do want to address a little bit of, you know, we when we signed these contracts, we thought that these girls were going to be recording artists, that they were going to be musicians, that they would be recording music, touring, making music videos. We, under no circumstances, signed contracts to be constant TikTok, making TikTok slime or YouTube slime videos, a thousand TikTok videos. We did not sign up to be social media people. We signed up for them to be in a band in a group um and, and like there's nothing wrong with also no, doing social media no, like leah loves TikTok. that's i love doing influencing and all that stuff but like we weren't doing anything else but that at the time yeah and then you know even i remember the first christmas even when we were home we would get text messages on christmas day on christmas day we had to leave our families behind, and we had to make content, like, by ourselves. Day. And I understand if you want some stuff, some fun Christmas things to post, but, like, not on Christmas Day, whenever you're supposed to be celebrating with your family, you know? And, like, we would work every single day. We were supposed to get one day, well, we got one day off a week, if it even happened. And whenever it did happen... We would usually get a text saying, you guys should all go meet up and make content together. Or, I need you to do this, 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 and this video. But, like, it was not just, like, do this small video. It was, like, a long process. Pour like, milk over your head. and Like, it was just crazy stuff that, like, we should not be having to do on the one day off. And you're supposed to have, like, a 12-hour turnaround from, like, the last... Uh, like the end of working till the next day that you work and also that would never happen like and and then so that we would work 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 we would get snarky text messages while they were on their big vacations that we weren't pushing the merch enough or we weren't doing enough the moms got ma like mad messages every single day all the time something. i wouldn't say every single day but we got them a Almost. lot and then, you know, that we're not doing enough and blah, blah, blah. Well, we're all just promoting to the same people. We're promoting to, we all the girls have nearly the same followers. Like, 
the same fans. And so we're just regurgitating all of this stuff on our same old videos. Um, um, and then, you know, so it, it was just a constant, it was, it was just a constant thing. And then of course we weren't getting paid for any of this. And then at one point Jojo told the girls, when your TikTok gets to the amount of money where each of you can have a thousand dollars, I'm going to give you that each a thousand dollars. That never happened. And that came straight from, that was from Jojo. Yeah. Straight from her mouth. At AGT. And yeah, around the AGT time. And it never happened. They never got any money for that kind of stuff. And the thing is, Jess wants to say it's a job, but then she wants to say she doesn't have to pay them. What is it? Because if it's a job, you get paid for a job. If it's not a job, then we shouldn't be required to relocate and just languish in California. You know, it would have been one thing if we could have gone out for a week or two, come back home. You know, I could have hired somebody to run my daycare for a week or two and then me be back home. You know, like, we, I could have made things work. Um, I could have substitute taught at home and then gone, you know, but we never knew what we were doing. There was no set schedule. And there was a lot of times we were out in California that was unnecessary and we were languishing around. We would go, we would work, say, like, all of these hours and all of this, and then we would just have, like, two or three weeks off. And but we couldn't go we home. Could, yes. Okay. We couldn't go home. We couldn't go home, and so we were just sitting out there with nothing to do because obviously we don't live there, and at the same time, we're, like, struggling out there. Like, what are we supposed but to be doing all this time? We're but then we're supposed to be off and doing all these TikToks and stuff. Well, we could have made TikToks at home. Exactly. We could have made the dumb YouTube videos here in Texas. I mean, you know, and I'm not knocking TikToks and YouTube. Leah works very hard at her TikTok. I think that's a great medium, but we that's not what we signed up for. Yeah. You know, we didn't sign up to to be social media people. We signed up to be a girl pop group. Um, mm -hmm. And if, and, and I understand, but it, it all seemed to just be about the merch, you know, and it was a constant, yeah. you're not pushing the merch enough, even though the girls wore the merch all, all the time. Like, literally, I did not own one other shirt the except last, for the merch. The last year, I just stopped buying She bottom, stopped buying, buying me, tops. like, tops because... We literally could not wear them. We had to wear the merch every single time. Yeah. And, you know, there was just, like, no... There was there was no compensation for the social media. And no expectations were set for just how much of their time would be spent on social media, media versus being musicians. You know? And that's, that's the difference. It was like, what are we? Are we... Are we social media people? Are we just a figurehead to boost merch? And again, so many broken promises. A movie, cartoons, dolls, a trip to Australia, a trip to Dubai. XO, Angie, we're making misery. Yeah, amen. That's funny. Y'all always come up with funny things. Okay, so something I want to talk about, and then we will also answer your guys' questions in a few minutes. Um, and also, thank you so much to everybody who has gotten badges. We really, really appreciate it. But something that I want to talk about a little more is the grueling rehearsals. Okay. Where do I even get started with this? Should I talk about... What should I talk about first? Okay. Just in this general, we would... Okay, so we were not allowed to wear, like, tank tops. Our stomachs couldn't show at all. But... Every rehearsal, we had to wear a sweatshirt and sweatpants, and JoJo would crank the heat up all the way, and basically, I guess this is just how she was raised to do it, but, like, we literally kids, and, like, with my disability, like, I take a lot of medicine, and so being, like, in an overheating environment like obviously that's not good for me and so we had to wear sweatshirts and sweatpants multiple layers with the heat all the way up dancing full out we literally just and go singing. over and over and singing over and over and over and then like to the point where we'd be almost 
passing out. Like, we couldn't, we literally couldn't, like, we would literally have to run outside to, like, breathe because it got so hot. And other things is there was a lot of just, like, I don't know if you'd call it degrading. Like, she would make us go one at a time doing all of the dances and then, like, make our peers critique us but it wasn't like constructive criticism like that's one thing yes if it's something that needs to be fixed of course but it was just mean things that were being said and she was making people say about each other and then always just pitting us against each other and putting us literally like we're supposed to be a group we're not supposed to be fighting for every single part I know especially for me on the show it never changed I was always fighting for my own part because for some reason, mine always gotten taken away. You saw that on the show, guys. And it didn't change after. And so that was something that, like, was really hard, working so hard, and then recording your part and all this, and then getting it taken away. And so there was a lot of things And, like and that. I, I don't want to, first of all, Leah and I both understand the hard work. I mean, Leah dances oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. at Beyond Belief. Anybody who knows Beyond Belief knows that there's a standard of excellence there that she's always been under. She's not afraid of hard work. We're not afraid of hard work. Oh, absolutely not. Conditioning for those shows like Mall of America is You need it. You can't you do it, it without the conditioning, without the hard work. That's one thing. But, like, it's... The degrading part of it. It's the degrading and that, like, there's actual, like, physical things that could be... I don't know how to word it, but yeah. y- y- I think good. you guys know what I'm, what I mean by that. Yeah. So. All okay. right. BBDC is hardcore. I know because my friend goes. Yeah. Well, who is your friend? Let me know who's your friend. Yeah. You know, b- beyond belief, it has a standard of excellence. Justin has a standard yeah. of excellence, and I appreciate that. That's why Leah has such a good work ethic. My daughter Kiana has such a good work ethic. And I've I've always like, excuse me, I've always been a hard worker I've been raised that way from home my mom and my dance studio Justin and everybody in my life I've always been raised to be a hard worker and like it takes hard work you can't just expect something and then get it Jojo Lee Miller somebody said y'all have some zingers do y'all sit home thinking about it I bet they do Beyond Belief is amazing thank you we think so too oh my gosh but like I've always been raised that you need to work hard in order to get what you want but it was not that that was it was just the part where the girls always felt like they were still in competition with each other and that yeah very hard and then you know but there were good things with the bad you know i it just mm-hmm. it just at this point the bad outweighs the good which is really i sad. also okay i want to talk a little bit about mall of america as well Okay, let me see if there's any, like, super important questions before we get into this. What do you think of Penelope? We knew who Penelope was before she was ever in the group. Um, She was in the dance circuit. She and her sister, they came to a lot of XOMG Pop events, and I always thought she's really cute, and I'm jealous of her hair. I think it's so cute. Uh, (laughs) All right, I think we should move on to... The next topic. Okay, go girl. So, I want to talk about Mall of America. This is just an instance where everything that you see on social media absolutely do not believe. Because this was literally one of the most, like, uh, I don't know how to say it. Like, it was one of the most, honestly, kind of traumatic experiences (laughs) I've had. I mean, literally. Okay. So, we start with... A sound check we always would do sound checks and also these would go literally crazy we would always be getting yelled at at the sound checks because even that started on Jojo's that store. started on Jojo's store I was literally so scared to ever go do a sound check like it was literally miserable my biggest fear it was so miserable and then like you have a bunch of people watching you at the same time you're getting screamed at you're getting screamed at so we're at Mall of America and it's actually after hours the mall had just closed but there was probably how many people do you think were Gosh, watching a hundred 
There was more than 100. Like, you think? Yeah, almost 300 people watching us. I don't think it was that many. No, the, the floors were filled, girl. There was a lot of people still left in the mall. There was a, a lot. lot of people because, obviously, we're, in the big, we're on the big stage in our bright costumes. Yes, we had to do sound check in our costumes and full makeup, full hair, all of that. Dress At the rehearsal. same time, yeah, it's like dress rehearsal. I was so sick. Like, I could barely walk. Everybody knew this. One of the other girls was also having some medical issues at the same time. Dallas, you can say. Okay, her name. Dallas. And so we were doing our sound check and we were getting absolutely screamed at. And mind you, there's like how many people watching? And we come off of the stage. She keeps stopping the music, stopping the music, stopping the music. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm literally about to go off the stage and throw up. And then, like. No, she did. She I, had to run to, I had to run to the up. bathroom. And it was so bad. And, yes, I will get to that, guys, in a second about the headsets. But we get off stage. And she, she goes, you say this part because I don't want to say. Um, what? Imply a bad word. So you say it. I don't know what you when we got off stage, what Jess said to us. I don't remember. I, yes, I, you do. About you guys. Oh, she said you guys effing sucked? Yeah. Yeah, she said they effing sucked. And then they... She said, you guys better have... You guys owe me $500,000. No, 200000 oh. No, 200000 $200,000. Something along those lines because she thought that we didn't do good in our... Um, Rehearsal. Rehearsal, and so she was degrading us, saying, um, you owe me this money for this performance, and, like, obviously we, we didn't, but, like... <laughs> and then, you know, the, the little girl that we mentioned earlier that was having issues with breathing, she'd been to the doctor, she'd had breathing treatments, um, she was really struggling to breathe. The Minnesota air is hard, I guess, if you have, like, lung issues, it was so uh -huh. cold, and she'd been to the doctor already, and they were threatening to kick her out of the performance. She was screaming and crying into her mic. It was, people it was were all so around. Bad. There were so many people screaming, can, crying, and they're just like, we're not going to do it with her. And we were like, oh, mind you, all of us. The I'm, moms are like, please, Jess, please talk to JoJo, because JoJo was the one not wanting JoJo, to let her do JoJo it. JoJo was the one that was trying to just kick her out of the whole group. And we were like, Jess, please, please, you know, just please talk to her. Because the moms, we didn't want to lose another girl. We And we cared no, about her. And we not. knew she was struggling. And, you know, I thought, oh, gosh, well, Leah's next because she's over there puking. But she's trying her hardest. You know, all the dads were there. The dads were flipping out because they'd never seen their girls be treated like that before. And we're telling them to shut um, up. They cannot do that because we have no NDA. So we can say whatever we want. Yeah. Um, and all of this is true. Like it's all there's receipts. Um, yeah. So all of this is true. And so that was the most grueling experience ever. And sh th what would always happen is Jess would go, "You, you moms, you better go yell at your kid and tell them what they're yeah. doing wrong." And my mom, like obviously, my mom is tough on me. Like if I'm not doing what I need to do, she will tell me she's straight up with me, but also she's supportive and knows what's right for me and what's not. And so a lot of the times whenever she would tell us, she would say, go to your moms and y'all need to yell at your kids and tell them what they're doing right. And y'all better get this all together, whatever. And she'd be like, just keep your head up. It's okay. <laughs> because I would In try to look like I was getting on to her. I mean, if she needed gotten on to, if she wasn't trying hard, then I would. But, like, you know, 85, 89% of the time, she was doing the best she possibly could. And so I would just act like I was getting on to her, but I was just like, <laughs> you got this. Just keep going. It's okay. You and, know. And at Mall of America, I know some of our dads were there too, and like I think that was starting a breaking point because it was our dads were like, "What?" And so they were telling um, us to go. We had a long conversation with our parents and like saying to yell at us and tell us what we were doing wrong. And then we kept doing the dance. And literally, mind you, after we did this, we had to run it probably 
Girl, I'm not even being dramatic. Probably close to 20 times because she, that was what I was she kept stopping it and kept going on. And then we would do the whole thing. And then we'd have to go do the whole thing again. We're sweating in these big costumes. There's like 300, 200 people watching us. She's yelling at us, screaming at us. And then at the same You're time. You're puking. I'm puking. Dallas can't, can't breathe. breathe. I, um, <laughs> it's, it's late, late at night. It's, it's late like at night. and then 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I couldn't even walk. After we finished, my dad had to carry me to the room because that's how bad, like, I was feeling. And so, the next day, we were very, very nerve, like, it was very nerve-wracking. We were all so nervous. Like, one girl actually puked backstage, like, right before we went on. Uh And uh, the nerves were high. The nerves were so bad because we didn't know what... We didn't know how this was going to go because of the night before. And we knew that we were giving it our absolute all. And so, but it wasn't good enough. For no. Me. And so we go on stage and we have these little in-ears. I've talked about it before. And we hear a voice in the middle of our performance saying, You guys, the energy is low. Y'all are sucking. Come on, guys. What are y'all doing? Like all of these things. They're, she's like, it's sloppy. And we're trying to sing to, like, how many thousands of people that are at the Mall of America it's trying full. to be a big performance. There's people up there. There's people down there, over there, over there. We're trying to cater to everybody. We're trying to sing live and dance full out. And then we hear this voice in our heads. Like, how does that affect a person? Like, <laughs> when you're literally performing for thousands of people. And so that that was so bad. And then after we got off stage... Um, our moms are like, y'all did so good. Y'all did so good. Like, it was really good. And then Jess asked, text Jojo and ask her, how was it? And you want to know what she said? Sloppy. She said it was sloppy. No good. Like, it was sloppy. And we were all so proud of them. It was a huge performance. Even Jess, even Jess. Was proud of Was them. proud of us. And yeah. Jojo goes, no, it was sloppy. Mm. And to think, like, yes, of course, there was probably things we could have done better. I know there's absolutely things yeah. I could have done better. It was our well, first time. Chi- you were children. We still are. I'm still children. Yeah. <laughs> but this was our first time singing six or seven songs, dancing full out, singing live in front of all of these people. And it was so your first really huge. Huge concert. That had more than one song. Yeah, exactly. Like you- performed to more people than that but it was just one song like on jojo's tour there were thousands of people but it was one song um the children family emmys it was one song you know exactly. it the everywhere this was the first time that y'all had performed six songs uh, you'd never even performed two songs back to back yeah no know? and so uh that's not true there was some kids con y'all did a couple of songs oh yeah but like kids con y'all did more than one song yeah <laughs> but so yeah that's basically what happened, and uh, it was sloppy, guys. Sloppy. <sighs> like, yes, there's things we could have done better, but there's always improvement. This was our first time doing this, and you could have said, good job, guys, this was your first time, and then at rehearsal tell us what we could have done better, you know? But the time the music stopped, yeah, that was actually, I don't, I don't know if that was planned or not, but, um, I don't think it was planned, but yeah, our music stopped one time and And we just just kept going. We were singing live. So we just kept singing who was worse. Jess or Jojo. I just think it's just different in different situations. Like they could both actually be really nice and they could both actually be really terrible. You know, it just depended on the mood. Yes. But, um, like I said, guys, some people were asking, I was not a favorite one of JoJo's. I was not one of JoJo's favorites. Um, we do believe that, like, Jess actually uh, liked me a lot. Yeah. But I was definitely not one of JoJo's favorites. And that was very, very apparent. All right. So, let's Let's see. So, if any of you guys, questions. we're just going to stay on a few more minutes. So, if anybody has any questions, put those now. 
And um, also, guys, if you want to hear, like, the initial story, you can head to Rolling Stone or even on my TikTok, um, Leah.Rose.Sanderson, or my mom's TikTok, Angie.Sanderson. We have a bunch of videos reposted of people kind of summarizing it. And so if you want a quick summary. You can of, go to Code Deb. She summarized a lot of it. All of those and check it out. And just if you guys um, want to, you know, share this out because we don't want other people being treated like this. And like we just wanted to bring awareness in our it's, story. It's really important that it doesn't just go away because yeah. I was told once by JoJo that um, – Nobody ever really gets canceled that she couldn't really get canceled because the next Monday they would have JoJo something else to talk about. has been in so many scandals, and yeah. but they all just end up going and away. And it's not that we're trying to cancel her or anything. No, no. But it's it's important that this doesn't just die off. Like, because it's we something feel that like needs they to be owe these girls an apology. They owe these girls money for selling their faces on merch and never paying them. Like, there are things that they need to do to make this right. And if we let it go away, guys, it's they're not ever going to make it right. And they're going to continue to use and abuse people because they think they're that powerful. They think that, you know, because they have money that they have all the power. And, you know, we people have a, a voice and to use it. And we would just ask you guys to use your voice as well because there are still girls in the group. And our hope is that the girls that are in the group that by us speaking out, it's changing conditions for them. That they, I can already tell by some videos that they've been doing a little bit more school. and that they're getting paid and you know i hope that by us speaking out it's changed the conditions in the group for the better but also just in general they shouldn't be allowed just to get off scot-free exactly. um, and you know whether that means having to make a formal apology to these girls that are no longer in the group and i cannot speak for the other three in the group but when you have seven girls and four of four them, are, them gone. are gone there's probably an issue. issue in management. It's not just me and Leah. Like I, th I know we're the only. Just to make this clear, we're the only people not under um, an NDA. NDA. Because so, we chose not to do that because we wanted to tell your story. Yes, we were trying to be forced into an NDA, and we absolutely did not do that because just in our circumstances, we're a little bit different than the other girls, and so we can't speak for them. But we had the choice to not. And the thing is, yeah, and the thing is, you know, they shouldn't be allowed to get away with this. They shouldn't be allowed to use children. They shouldn't be allowed to call it a job, but then say that they don't have to pay them. Um, and again, I'll be posting more things. I'm looking for that. The contract are this thick and so and there's four of them you know so I'm looking for that section where it talks about the housing I hope to get that posted on a feed post on my Instagram um you know this week I'll be posting some other things because I just think it's important to make noise when things are wrong I think it's important exactly okay do you we'll take a couple of questions and then we're gonna go okay do you um, want to we're there let's see <laughs> the the robes and the slippers with their that faces. was just something no we thought that was cute i wish we still had leah's i'm sure they got thrown in the trash oh by the way guys y'all want to know something so i actually do not have my original jacket that i got from the show because jess actually asked for mine for um to give to, to give toys. to a toy company to because my doll was actually already made it was the prototype. It, the prototype. They decided to do mine, and they wanted to see my real jacket. And so, <laughs> I don't have it. No. I don't have my real jacket. And, like, that's And also, they should give that back to her. She earned that. I earned that, and, and, like, that was, like, a, it's still a big part of my life. So, like, I would like to have that, but. Yeah. Um, what was it like in the recording studio during Sue's Dance Pop? Y'all... She was dance pop. Like, the recording studio was always in audition, so, like, it definitely was stressful. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, sometimes we got to the go, go to the recording studio without Jess and JoJo and with our vocal coach, Luke, and so sometimes those were fun. Like, whenever we got... I think got... Luke was amazing, and I think he made it a fun experience for y'all. Mm -hmm. Luke, Luke and Gus. Was, how do you see Luke and Gus on the TV show, like, uplifting and clapping for the girls and all that? That was that. always... That's how... They were always...
always like that. They yeah. were always like that. And they recorded a lot of their, they wrote and recorded a lot of their music that's on the Party yes. Like a Popstar album. And they all, I know Leah always loved going to record with Luke and Guess. Really? But then it was stressful whenever Justin joined yeah. over there. But then, and I feel like the situation's like, even Tishler and Jeannie were amazing to work with. Megan Trainer was amazing to work with. So I feel like, a lot of the recording was really good experience. Oh, and, yeah. And was And even getting to positive. perform and do all of this stuff. Like, I would definitely not be as experienced as I am without all of this stuff. It has helped me a ton. But. There were a lot of things that were done wrong. Exactly. You know, and if we could have just gone out there, taken care of business, come home, go back when we needed okay, to. Okay, everyone's saying reach out to Allison. Is it. Sto Allison Stone? I actually have tagged Allison Stoner in some videos um, and in our stories, but... Um, if you guys want to go to her page and let her know, if yes. you guys want more attention, go to people who you think that should know about this. And tell and them about tag it. tag them, tell them about tag it. Tag them in our stories. Tag guys, them let's go flood in comments. Them comments. <laughs> yes, I definitely think Allison Stoner would be amazing. Um, we had some cool people look at some of our stories. We had a really. We've cool, had a lot of support from people, which yes, is yes. We've had a really big Disney star that's an adult now. That I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to be like a clout person. But um, she's followed Leah and given her some encouraging words, which has been just really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, you guys go to Allison's comments, go to her page, DM her, tag her and stuff. If the more people that do this, the more. Um, it can get out there and get to her, so. Yeah, and even, like, you know, just anybody that you think would be interested or that could help with this. Um, Leah and I were approached today, as a matter of fact. We have a meeting, a Zoom meeting tomorrow. tomorrow. And, you know, how things, projects can come and go and never happen, but we've been approached to possibly do a documentary. So, could it not happen? Yes. Are we promise, making y'all promises that it's going to happen? No. no. Um, we know how these kind of things work, but we're interested. And it may be something once we meet with them tomorrow that it's not something we want to be a part of. Or they may end up not doing the project or whatever. But um, oh, we, yeah, we just think it's really important that people follow the labor laws. They're there for a reason. They're there to protect these children. And it and the labor law says any child in the entertainment business who is not a professional actor must be paid a wage. So anything that's considered entertainment, they have to be paid an hourly wage. And the way it says and why it says professional actors don't, it's because generally professional actors are paid a lump sum or they're not past, they don't have to be paid hourly um, because they usually get paid per episode or you get so much per movie, they're obviously it's, paid. That's different, but like anyone. But else. any child, a dancer, a singer, a content creator, it doesn't, it doesn't say, it doesn't set specifications. It says any child in the entertainment industry must be paid an hourly wage unless they are a professional actor mm -hmm. and they get paid differently. Um, so these children should have been paid. Period. Okay, just to clear this up real quick, a lot of people are saying stuff about Kaya, um, just like asking questions. She, we can't speak on, on like their behalf, but... All I have is good things to say about Kaya. She's a really nice kid, and we're reconnecting very soon. She's so. really talented. Y'all talk yes. a lot on the phone. Um, she's a super talented girl, um, and I hope that she and Leah get to be friends for a long time. Tatum as well. Obviously, you know Kinley is, and Tracy are our besties. Yeah. We're so thankful for them. Um Bella, we wish her all the best. You know, we think these kids are talented. We think the kids in the group are talented. And honestly, there's room for everybody, you know. So we just want everybody to live their best dream, mm -hmm. you know. But do it healthy but, and be and treated be right. be treated right, exactly. We want those people to not be treated bad. And yes, the industry is hard. 
But for oh, children, yeah. it shouldn't be as hard because they are children. How you treat me as an adult is not how you should treat Leah at 13, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, so a lot of people are asking about like our hairstyles and stuff like that. We were pretty much, I know that Kinley was always having to wear her pigtails, kind of like, you know, Jojo always had to wear her side ponytail. They kind of forced us into putting on, you know, that kind of persona. And, um, she, but we're not, and when we say putting on the persona, like Leah likes rhinestones. You know, Leah was a dancer. She didn't mind a rhinestone. She doesn't mind a costume, you know. But, it, you know, at one point they were making Leah wear three ponytails in her hair. And it just looked stupid. Kinley didn't, as she got a little older, I can think I can speak for them and say she didn't want to wear those pigtails every single day. And try to and, voice it. You know, um, so it's just. Yes. <laughs> Wait, guys. I didn't even know Ollie. My cat was in here, and he just came over here. Like he just snuck out from behind her guitar. He's been he's been in here the whole time. Um. So yeah, there are things that as they grew older, they did want to change. And like, like we've talked about before, like Leah liked drawing the butterfly on her face. She thought it was oh, cool. Yeah. You know. So there are some things they really liked, but did they? always want to do like 75 scrunchies and <laughs> and stuff like that no <laughs> leah was lucky because she did get to kind of change her hairstyles up a some. little bit more than some other people um but kinley bless her heart she always had those pigtails and you know <laughs> the scrunchies on her ankles and yeah. when other people did have a little more le leeway i feel like she didn't have as much leeway yeah <clears throat> all right guys well I think we are just going to head out. Yes, Kinley's scrunchies were so cute. Yeah, but I did like that. At 13, she probably wouldn't want to still be doing that. I know. Right? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming on here and listening to us. And we really, really, really appreciate all of the undivided support. We yes, thank so you guys much. so, so, so much. And thank you guys for just being here and listening. Hi, dear to Hannah Prep. Hi. <laughs> and so we love you guys so much. Yes. Oh, and real quick before we get off, I just want to thank everybody who has been supporting me through this very yes. strange tumor issue that I'm dealing with. Okay. I've been to the eye doctor because they wanted to see if my eyesight had changed a lot. It's only changed a little bit in the right eye. The left eye is still good. Um, right now, I'm waiting for uh, to get my MRI appointment, and and after we get like some testing and stuff done, I'll know if uh, they're gonna want to do radiation, if they're gonna want to do um, surgery, surgery, if they're gonna want to watch it. I do have some symptoms, mm -hmm. which generally means they don't watch it. Um, we appreciate everybody that's been donating so much, <laughs> like. Dear Hannah Prep and Hannah, you're just amazing. Like, just I can't even talk about everybody. I know that we are has so, donated. So little appreciative guys. And we just appreciate. You've helped us so so much. We so just thank you. yeah appreciate everybody so mm -hmm. much. Um, the GoFundMe is still in Leah's bio, mm -hmm. but um, in her link tree, I mean, in in her Instagram. Um, but I just appreciate you guys, and I will keep you updated. As I know more because I think your everybody has just sent so many messages and, and helped donate and all those things. So I just want to let y'all know um, how things are going and I'm just pushing through. There's a lot of headaches and a lot of tiredness, but I'm just really pushing through and... Mm -hmm. um, we're, Being strong. Yeah, girl. I mean, how can I not be when I live <laughs> with this one? She... She um, is the best example of, <laughs> you know, take a licking and keep on ticking, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. We will talk to you later. Also, somebody asked if Ollie's a boy or girl. He's a boy. So, He's a boy. He's a boy. He's, He's a boy. so cute. Wait, hold on, guys. Just right before we leave, I got to show you his bow tie. Look at his bow tie. It has little lemons on it. And it's Mama a bow tie. And Mama Cat has one. It's pink with red strawberries. So, it's so cute. All right. So we have a boy and a girl. Ah! Say bye, Oddie Waddie.